CBS News can now make a projection in the Iowa Republican caucuses. That projection is that the projected winner, former President Donald Trump. That is based not only on results as they have begun to come in from the caucuses now, just a little bit more than a half an hour old, but also entrance poll data matching those two together gives us the confidence to project former President Trump as the winner. And this is a very early call in the evening, so it is likely to be a decisive outcome in favor of the former president, Donald Trump, the projected winner of the Iowa Republican caucuses. Let's go now once again to CBS News Election and Surveys Director Anthony Salvanto, who is, of course, at the CBS News Data Desk. Anthony, tell us how we got here. There you go, Major. Uh, look, we've got entrance polls. We had them all over the state, and we had them talking to voters as they were going in. I can tell you they were overwhelmingly saying that they were going to vote for Donald Trump. And then, as we started to get a trickle of those results coming back from the precincts, in fact, Donald Trump. And all our model estimates here at the data desk were pointing to Donald Trump. And really, that's not a surprise to anyone. He was leading so handily in all of the pre-caucus election polls. So there's your projection for Donald Trump. Now, here's the other really important point. Delegates won. We have estimated right now there's 40 delegates at stake. Based on those early estimates, we can tell you that Donald Trump is going to get at least 11 of those delegates. Now, look, Iowa is about attention. It's about staking a claim to being a front runner, which Donald Trump obviously is. Really not the delegate math here that matters because there's a long way to go. But that's your delegates. And then I'll point you to the map here. And you can see we're starting to get this trickle of votes in. And out of them so far, he's, he's got a comfortable, comfortable edge. Having said that, we're going to watch this map all night. And here's the other thing. Here's the other thing, is that there's going to be a race at least between DeSantis and Haley for second place. And that one may keep us up here for at least another hour as those start to come in, Major. Understood. Anthony, is there a story within the story as to say which issues perhaps... Uh, broke most favorably for the former president? Yeah, there is indeed. I'm going to punch up here a couple of these. And, you know, take a look at, first of all, the, um, the white evangelical vote here. You know, you've got solid support for Donald Trump. Now, look, folks who know politics know that this is always a really important part of the Iowa caucus. White evangelical voters are going to be a large percentage. Well, Donald Trump, of course, they've shown him strong support for really through his presidency and no no change in that. The other one that I want to talk to, though, is this majority of Iowa caucus goers who said that if Donald Trump were to be convicted of a crime, they felt he would still be fit to be president. And I think that's really important because as themes of democracy are going to be are going to be talked about all through this campaign, that's one where you say, OK, well, there was those Republican base voters. They feel that those indictments are politically motivated. They feel, in fact, that that's motivating for them to go out and they tell us in the polling to go out and support Donald Trump. And I think that's a key dynamic to watch in all this major. Anthony Salvanto, thank you very much. Just to reset the clock. CBS News projects former President Donald Trump, the projected winner of the Iowa Republican caucuses. For more, let's bring in CBS News campaign reporter Olivia Rinaldi. Olivia is at Trump headquarters here in Des Moines. Olivia, has that word spread to headquarters? Yeah, hi, Major. We're here at the Trump watch party in Des Moines, and it has spread here, kind of. There's a lackluster party happening here. There's no one in here right now. But I could just hear cheers in the room next door, which is where the Trump media war room is happening. So clearly they must have heard or seen my tweet that I put out where Trump is projected to win the Iowa caucus here. I just heard something that Anthony said, though, that you could start to hear some cheers here, too, as people are, are finding out. I just heard something that Anthony said that I thought was interesting, which is the white evangelical vote that really delivered it for Trump tonight. Uh, I spoke earlier about how rural voters were really key to Trump, those older, whiter, evangelical voters, and really turning them out was the key point tonight. That's what the campaign was really concerned about in my conversations with them, was really that this weather is impacting those people. This extreme cold weather was really preventing those folks from coming out tonight. That appears to not be the case, that they actually did turn out in droves, and Trump is appearing to win the Iowa caucus. It's starting to kind of, kind of become lively in here tonight, more people coming in, streaming in. So I expect this party to get started any moment now. 
And Olivia, give our audience a sense of the level of, let's say, care, attention, one might even use the word devotion, that the Trump organization has placed to the importance of turning out even one or two potential Trump supporters in far-flung parts of Iowa, particularly hard hit by the most recent winter storm. I know you have some actual anecdotes about that. Please share them. Yeah, I do. I spoke with a senior Trump campaign official in Iowa earlier today about their efforts to really get people to turn out to the precincts tonight. He told me that he is actually going door to door, clearing driveways for people. And these are farmers, so they're not short driveways. They're very long driveways. They've got gravel on them. They've got all these issues. And also, they've had four to five feet of snow on top of them after this past week. It's been a huge problem. They haven't been able to get out of their houses. So he told me he's riding around this little skid steer, which, if you don't know, is this tiny little mobile with a little... Uh, digger thing on the end of it that can push the snow out of the way. He's been going okay. door to door to make sure these people can get out of the Olivia, house. Olivia, can I and interrupt? That they, and that they can... Yeah, absolutely, Major. Let me, let me interrupt because the former president is speaking now. If we can bring that sound up, please. We didn't have Israel being attacked. We didn't have Ukraine being attacked. And they would have never been attacked. We didn't have China threatening to take Taiwan. We didn't have ships being blown up all over the Middle East like happened today. We had a strong country. We had a respected country. And everybody was doing much better in this room. And I was better for the farmers, they say, thank you. I was better for the farmers, they say, than any president in the history of our country. I got, I got China to pay $28 billion to the farmers of our country because they took advantage of politicians that were doing a very poor job. And frankly, they took advantage of our great farmers. And that's not going to happen, and it will never happen with me. I, I stood up for ethanol like nobody has ever stood up for it. And I think that's very important. That has a big impact on Iowa and some other places, but in particular, you. And we did a job like, frankly, nobody has done in a long, long time. We didn't have terrorism. We didn't have people pouring into our country. We didn't have an invasion where people are pouring in and coming in from prisons all over the world, from mental institutions and insane asylums all over the world. We have terrorists coming in now. In, 19, in 2019, you probably saw the same chart. It was actually a little hard to believe even for me. They had zero terrorists coming into our country captured. And as soon as we had an unfortunate event. We, you know, we got more votes last time than any sitting president in the history of our country. And then they said, gee, we lost by a whisker, you know, by somebody that would never got out of the basement. So we're going to be very careful. We all have to work together on that. We have to be very careful. But we had a country like we've never had. We had the most successful country we've ever had. We had the best economy we've ever had. And it was an honor to have won your state twice. You know, we won twice, and we won decisively. And in fact, no president that's won Iowa, Ohio, and Florida has ever lost an election, except for us. And again, we won twice, and we won in landslides, all of those states. And we're going to win them again. We have better poll numbers now than we've ever had. We but. We've beaten Biden, and I call him crooked Joe Biden. He's the worst president in the history of our country. He's the most incompetent, and he's the most corrupt president in the history of our country, and it's not even close. In fact, I said today the happiest person alive today is Jimmy Carter because his presidency looks brilliant, brilliant by comparison to Biden. It looks brilliant. But very importantly, because we have to beat him, I'm the only one Every single poll over the last two months, and beyond that, mostly, but over the last two months, I'm beating him and beating him very substantially. I'm saying we're beating him because we have to get him out. He's destroying our country. He is totally destroying our country. So I just want to say it's been an honor. That was former President Trump addressing his supporters here in downtown Des Moines, Iowa. CBS News has projected that former President Trump will win the Iowa caucuses. Let's bring in Dave Cottrell. He's a former senior Iowa advisor to Mitt Romney's 2008 campaign. Dave, it's great to see you. 
early night for the former president. Anything about that surprise you? No, nothing about that surprises me. Donald Trump was going to win these caucuses. He's had the lead from the beginning of this race until tonight. Very stable uh, race. It hasn't very stable. at all. Hasn't moved much. We've seen some movement, obviously, out of Nikki Haley. Mm -hmm. We've seen some downward movement from Ron DeSantis. But this race for Donald, there's two campaigns. There's Trump against expectations. Is he going to break 50 percent tonight? If he doesn't break 50 percent, that means over half of Iowa said no thank you. Uh, the real race, though, is for second place. Uh, it's to see who gets that burst of energy going to New Hampshire. And that's going to be important because in 2016, Trump had a large field to run against here and in New Hampshire. It got smaller, but he still had four or five people in that race really into Florida. Um, it's got to get to one on one really quickly. Uh, you know, Donald Trump is the overwhelming favorite to be the nominee, but a second place challenger that gets some energy into New Hampshire, one on one race, right. that could change the dynamic. And Dave, you know as well as I do, if a Trump supporter were sitting here, he would remind both of us, well, Trump got 24 percent in Iowa in 2016, went on to become the Republican nominee, win the presidency. If he gets close to 50, that's twice as strong. That's yeah. more momentum than he had in 2016. Well, that's true for Iowa's standards. But again, we've got to get this race to two people mm -hmm. if there's ever going to be any kind of competition. If he's got three people in this race, him, DeSantis, Haley, go on through South Carolina to Super Tuesday, everybody knows it's Donald Trump, Trump's race at that point. Him against the field, he'll always win. One-on-one -on -one will be something we really haven't seen before. If it happens early in a place like New Hampshire that really likes to surprise and often likes to reject Iowa's results, Maybe we'll have a race. I think a lot of Republicans would like to see it be interesting, mm -hmm. and it could get interesting. Right now, though, it's a good night for Donald Trump. They built the organization they needed. He's got a lot of energy here on the ground. We'll see how the numbers play out. Right. But I think we've got to go to New Hampshire and see what happens next. Dave Cotchell, thank you so very much for joining us.